so yeah, my topic would be on uh, cognitive and self-adaptive system for effective distributed tracing in applications. So uh, maybe just a show of hands, like uh, how many of the teams or uh, organizations are using distributed tracing for their applications? Okay, quite a good number. So yeah, so uh, you must be aware, uh, like today the distributed tracing uh, mainly are based on uh, the Google's Dapper implementation uh, and the implementations Primarily, uh, uh, the important one being uh, um, the Zipkin and uh, Jaeger. So based on these, uh, most of today's uh, implementations of distributed tracing are present. So I'll be uh, going through uh, what are the current f problems that we faced while using that implementation, and how did we manage to uh, take an informed decision cognitively in order to uh, mitigate that uh, issue that we were having. So, as per the trend now, I just asked uh, ChatGPT, what is distributed tracing? So, as per ChatGPT, it is a distributed tracing is a technique used to profile and monitor applications that consist of multiple interconnected components, often across distributed uh, systems. So, and that's the theoretical, theoretical uh, definition of uh, distributed tracing. So how uh, we have implemented it at uh, VMware is that uh, we have uh, created libraries which would uh, be basically inherited in the code itself, in the application side, uh, and the application would be sending out these traces uh, from the individual components into a common system. Um, so that common system uh, will, uh, I mean, the part where we pick up the traces that would be on the Jaeger and uh, Zipkin side, that remains the same. Just that uh, the current problem, uh, if you just dive into is that uh, currently traces are huge. We have a lot of, uh, like we have multitude of uh, microservices and it keeps growing, right? And having each trace uh, or each span of uh, the trace uh, collected on each request type or request, uh, like the duration, everything, is quite a task. So we do not sample all of them. Like the sampling rate is uh, never close to, like I haven't seen personally to greater than 5%. So it always remains less than five. So it's like something that we configure, it's one to 5%. And that's the, five is the best case scenario or the most that uh, is possible because Otherwise, it adds to the storage uh, cases, and we also have the issue of latency as well added to the application side. So to overcome this, uh, I mean, the issue with this very low level of random sampling is that we tend to miss out on opportunities where we need the actual error traces. Uh, the Out of the rest, say, uh, 99 to 94, 95% of the traces are can be, most of them can be 200 OKs or the traces that are very usual. The unusual traces that we want to collect are certainly getting missed out due to this random sampling that happens. As I mentioned, the uh, distribution is heavily skewed towards the known or the usual traces since it's random. There are chances that few of the traces might get in which might be of our interest, but the, the quantity or the amount of that is very low. And as for the implementation, the, uh, the, uh, the tracing that is implemented is a uh, head-based sampling that is uh, right uh, at the start of the implementation. The, the trace is uh, determined if it, is, if it will be qualified for storage or persistent or not. So it's like we don't go through the whole cycle of the, each call that is spans or uh, we just uh, eliminate that at the beginning because it does not fall in that one to five percent category. Next is the uh, storage overhead if sampling rate is increased. So like we are kind of in a dilemma. Increase the sampling rate, you need more storage. Lower the sampling rate, you tend to miss out on the unusual traces. So what is the uh, solution that we have implemented and actually found out the results to be impressive in particularly bigger prod clusters or the clusters that we have multiple services deployed in? is that we have uh, we have like generously gone towards the tail based sampling that is uh, that is because we have a logic around it 
to determine like which which traces or which traces to persist and uh, keep and which all to be eliminated out that's why the tail based sampling i'll go into uh, the detail of it why we did a tail based sampling and how we are determining it that which needs to be kept or which needs to be uh, eliminated that is where the adaptive sampling uh, logic will come into place uh, there is an adaptive sampler uh, engine which would generally give a sampling rate or a weighted sampling rate to the uh, to the traces that needs to be collected. That is in simple uh, like in simple maths, it is like uh, it's the inverse of the uh, us usuality of the traces. Like if it's more usual, it is giving less weight, less uh, less usual than a more weight. It's like a negative gain function. So uh, like diving into a detail of it, how do we do it? So we maintain the feature vector of each traces. Feature vector can include multiple things, that is the operation methods, operation path, service name, span, host name, uh, a trace can have multiple spans, right? So it can be like span one, host name, span two, host name, span two, uh, operation method, the duration it took, uh, the particular region it was to. So these are the set of the feature vectors that we have. Uh, then there is the uh, cluster data points. So we have a trace uh, aggregator uh, unit, which basically does the work of uh, determining the which cluster a new tracing uh, a tracing point that comes into the system would be placed under. It's 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 as simple as a, a density based uh, spatial uh, clustering that we do. Uh, that is on the basis of say a new data point or new trace arrives then in which cluster of uh, usuality or which, which cluster of weightage that it should fall under. That would be determined with this trace aggregator. And yeah, and then we calculate the, uh, the trace, um, the adaptive sampler then gives you the uh, weighted uh, sampling rate and based on that we uh, determine if it is to be persisted or not. Uh, so the whole system that I mentioned is diagrammatically would be like this. The, your microservices has individual uh, code uh, which sends in the uh, spans into the span aggregator. Now, span aggregator is a, a unit which does the uh, heavy lifting of, say, collecting all the spans. That is, uh, some spans might uh, might not be a complete span uh, compared to others. The trace IDs can be similar, but the span ID might end abruptly. Like the call might not have completed. Like if, for example, like you have a microservice A, B, C, D, and then back to A. In that case, you have a sampling which goes to AB, and you don't have a uh, uh, you don't have the calls after that. So, possibly that can be out of scenario that you want to investigate. So, for this kind of scenarios, the span aggregator comes into picture and looks for similar traces that have occurred for this uh, for this particular scenario and collects and aggregates the spans and makes a single span. Now these spans are sent to the trace cluster, which does the work of the density-based uh, spatial scanning and uh, determines the cluster to which a particular uh, trace would belong to. And then the, then the adaptive sampler engine comes into play, which determines the uh, sampling rate that you would be uh, needing in order to uh, persist the uh, trace or not. So the sampling rate, as I uh, briefly mentioned, is a function uh, uh, which determines which is a negative gain function uh, based on a few uh, tweakable parameters that we have. Uh, that is uh, basically uh, gives the weightage for a trace and if the weight is high, then it is uh, further going to the trace uh, storage servers and persisted for whatever the persistent time we are giving it. So this whole solution has been a additive on top of the distributed sampling because the uh, because the storage and the latency and the unusual trace collection was a challenge and it is on top of the uh, normal span and uh, trace collection. So uh, deploying this in production and with the multitude of services that we have, we have gained at least a 25 to 27% of advantage over the uh, the space storage that we have in order to persist the traces because rather than saving all the 200 OKs or all the usual traces, we are only capturing the set of traces which are of deeper interest, not completely uh, removing the 200 OKs, keeping them as well, but in addition, we are also giving more weightage to the unusual traces. Also, we have found uh, that the 
rate of unusual trace capture, which was not in the system earlier when we are going with the random sampling of say 5%, has increased to like about 35 to 40%, which is quite high because uh, the, uh, the other traces like the 501s, the 505s, everything that were missed out, we are already uh, getting it now as part of the system. Yeah, uh, so uh, this is the whole uh, uh, thing that we have implemented in order to get better results out of the distributed tracing, and it's in uh, in like in um, like a, it's, it's a working progress where the adaptive sampler rate uh, function, which I mentioned, it's like still getting uh, like it's still learning, and we're still trying to improve that. Yeah, and uh, the details of it maybe we can uh, we can ping me and we can discuss offline if uh, there's a particular function that we are using and the nuances of it and how certain parameters are tweaked and why it is tweaked. We can obviously discuss about it. Yeah, so yeah, these are the references that we took. And yep, yeah, thank you.